All right, so we just talked about common aggregate operations. And what we're going to talk about now is something called splitterators, or splittable iterators. And this is something that you'll have to know for the next assignment. It's super cool, um, although it's the depth of its coolness will only be partially understood at this phase. And so what we'll do is I'll explain to you what a splitterator is in general, and then we'll look at how a splitterator is used in our simple search stream. And you'll discover that uh, you'll, you'll get some of the wonderful things that splitterators can do, but there's more to it than we'll, we'll cover here. We'll cover that when we talk about parallel streams. So a splitterator is a new type of splittable iterator. There's a fancy name called portmanteau or something like that, which means moving two things together, two words together. So splittable, splittable iterator is a, uh, a portmanteau. And it can do two things. One thing you can do with a splitterator is you can use it as a better iterator. And you'll see why it's better in just a second. And so if it's a better iterator, you can use it to traverse through the elements in a source. And the source could be a collection, a built-in array, whatever. So let's take a look at an example. If you take a look here, you can see this example. <clears throat> so I've got uh, a list of strings, which is a, a quote it's from Hamlet. This above all, to thy know self be true, blah, blah, blah. And so that's the input. And now I'm going to go ahead down here, and I'm going to say quote.splitterator. So it's kind of like saying quote.iterator, but it gets the splitterator, not an iterator. And we'll talk about how that differs in a second. So now I have a splitterator to string. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to advance myself through that splitterator one element at a time. In other words, one string. You know, This, above, all, to, thine. Right? That's what it'll return each time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call try advance. Now try advance combines the behavior of has next and next in the iterator interface. So that's why I said it's a, it's a better iterator, because iterator's always been this goofy thing that had has next and next. And you're like, do I check in next for has next? And what? It's just so complicated. So they said, that's screwy. So they have just one method. And try advance returns true if you should keep going, kind of like has next. And it returns false if you should stop. Great. And it also has a side effect. And that side effect is essentially to do something. In this case, that something is going to be to print the string out. So notice we're passing a method reference. System.out colon colon print is going to print out the string. All right, so that's one thing that a splitterator can do. Yes? So is that like the default to what that's going to continue to go to in implementation for iterators now on? Like this advanced iterator is this like dot try advance one full default? Great question. So the question is basically is are we, getting, are we going to sort of sunset the somewhat convoluted iterator interface and move to splitterator? If you use streams, then absolutely, because that's what streams does under the hood. So it's doing all this stuff for you. It will see how it gets used. But um, as a rule of thumb, the need for using iterators once streams exist is vanishingly small. They haven't removed them. They're just sort of you know, deprecated. Not even deprecated. They're just sort of discouraged from being used for, for newer code. OK, so that's what try advance does. Now, the second thing you can do with a splitterator is to use to partition the elements in a source. And this will not become deeply clear until we talk about parallel streams. But I'll, I'll explain it to you briefly now, just so you have a, the gist of what's going on. So here again, we have our, our quote, right? And we've got some other things. Let's see what these things do. Well, we take our quote, which is a list, and we say dot splitterator. And that's going to give us a splitterator for the entire list. So we have a splitterator now for this quote. What, what it's going to do is not clear yet. The next line will be the thing that's clear. So after we've got a splitterator, we can call try split on the splitterator. So I, I have second half. You'll see why I called it second half in a, in a moment. When I first call this thing, splitterator is a splitterator to the entire element. So if I had second half, and I didn't make this call here to split it, if I called the try advance thing, it would go through every element. But once I call try split, what it does is it returns a new splitterator that will cover the elements 
that are no longer covered by the invoking splitterator. What the heck does that mean? Well, what it's doing, if you think about the word try split, it's going to split the input source in half. So this will return, try split will return a splitterator to the first half of the source. So let's say it's uh, this above all two. That's the first half. And then it's going to give us back a splitterator to, sorry, try split will, will cause the splitterator to give back a first half, which is this above all two. And then second half will update itself internally. So its splitterator will be thine own self be true. So it's splitting the input in half. That's what it's doing. So once we've done this, and, and it may not be clear why we're doing that, and I'll get to that in a second. Once we've split it in half, then uh, we can do some other stuff to it. Now, the best kind of splitterators, the, the highest quality splitterators, will split the source in half. And there's a reason for doing it in half. And if you think about uh, how all the wonderful things work in computer science, if you can break something in half, how many times can you break n items in half? Log n, Log n right? So that's going to give you a hint as to why it's trying to do it in half, because it's going to end up with a tree of sub sources of input, a balance tree of sub sources of input, which is log n levels deep. And then it's going to take those things and it's going to run them in parallel. So it's super cool, but we'll come to that shortly. So once we've done this, then, then we could do something goofy like this is just to illustrate this point. You, you probably wouldn't write code like this. It just illustrates the point. So we can say, hey, first half, print everything else out that you have in your splitterator. So that'll you know, say this above all two. And then you can say, hey, second half, print out the rest. And that'll say, thine own self be true. So that's what for each remaining does. It just basically says, you know, whatever else you got, just go ahead and call this action on it, which in this case is to print it. OK, so you're probably still going, what the heck is this useful for? This is really, really useful. It's really cool for parallel streams. Because what happens in parallel streams is we take the original input, which is some long thing, which could be a string or a list or whatever. And then we split it log n times to end up with a bunch of substrings or sublists or whatever. And then each of those things, each of those sublists, is then put into queues managed by a pool of threads. And those threads will then come down and process each of those sub-inputs in parallel. That's what we're doing. We're splitting things up, and then we're letting them run in parallel. So it's a super efficient way of being able to parallelize your input. I don't know if you recall, we talked briefly about what's different from a parallel program and a sequential program. And one of the key things is that parallel programs have some extra work to start out with, because they have to break the input up into the pieces, right? Well, this is a really efficient way of doing that. And then once those pieces are produced, then those things can run in parallel. And then, of course, there's a later phase that we'll talk about later about how do you join all the pieces back together again. OK, so the example I'm going to show you at the moment while we're dealing with sequential streams is just the traversal part. We'll come back and talk about partitioning after we talk about parallel streams. You don't have to know about that to understand what goes on with sequential streams, because it's not partitioning anything, because there's only one thread of control. So it's only breaking the input up into chunks. OK, so let's take a look and see how this works. So our simple stream, simple search stream program is going to use a sequential iterator, sequential splitterator, rather. And you can take a look here to find it. And here's the search for word method. So Arturo had asked before, what's the signature look like for that? And it, as you can see, it takes a string, which is the word we're searching for, and it returns a search results object. So that's why we transform the types, right? String to search result. And, and here's what a fragment of search for word looks like. You can go and look at the code if you want to see the whole thing. What it does is it makes a new search results object. And it's got a bunch of stuff in it. But the part we're going to focus on is the last piece where we say stream support dot stream. This is a factory method that's going to take a splitterator, which in this case is the word match splitterator. And it's going to basically split the input via the word. And we'll see what that means in a second. 
and we're going to pass in the value false. And what false says is run this thing sequentially, or maybe a better way to say it is it says don't run this in parallel, right? So if you put true, it'll be a parallel stream splitterator. If you put false, it'll be a sequential stream splitterator. We'll worry about sequential stuff for now. And so after we do that, we're going to basically break the input up into words that match the, into search results, and we collect them all into a list, and that's what ends up going as the final parameter to this search results object. So we're basically figuring out where the words appear in the string. That's, that's the big picture view here. OK, here's the constructor. This is really super cool, uh, because what it's doing is it's using Java regular expression matching. So hopefully you, you know a little bit about regular expressions. If you don't know much about them and you take the automata course or the compiler course, they'll cover them there. And basically, it's, it's pattern matching. And the way it works is you give it some pattern you want matched. So in that case, it's the, the word, right? So we take our word, and we get rid of any leading or trailing spaces. That's what trim is. And then we put these funny meta characters, backslash, backslash, b, at the beginning and end. And that says, match this as a word, right? So in other words, if I'm looking for the, uh, the word t, you know, as in the musical note t, ti, it'll only look for that as a word. It won't look for that as a sub word, like tie, you know, t-i-e. It won't match that. It'll just match t appearing by itself. So that's the regular expression word. And then we are going to go ahead and we're going to call the compile method. So, so first we get the word. Then we go ahead and call compile. And compile takes the word along with some flags, like we don't want to, we want to be case insensitive. And then that's going to go ahead and create a matcher that will look for instances of that word in the input string. So that's what regular expression does. So every time we call this, and you'll see how we call it in a second, it's going to check in the input string to see if it can find a match one at a time. So here's what try advanced does. It takes in a parameter. I'll talk about that parameter in just one second. And then it goes ahead and does the following. It checks to see whether or not it, there's any matches left in the string. Remember, every time you call find, it looks for the next match in the string using regular expression matching. And if it Find, if it can't find a match, we're done, right? We're finished with the iteration. Otherwise, if it can find a match, we're going to figure out where that match begins in the string. What's the starting offset of this thing? So we're going to make a new object that keeps track of the index in the string where that starts. And then we're going to say action.accept. The action is a consumer which is going to be able to accept a result, and the result will be where the thing matched in the string. So this is almost this is a good way of passing an out parameter using Java. So we're passing in a parameter, and we're updating it by calling its accept method to consume the result. And then we return true, because there could be more matches. We just don't know yet. We, have, we only found the latest one. So that's what try advance does. It, it advances things by one. Yeah. Wouldn't that be inefficient if it has to find it each time? Oh, it, the pattern matcher keeps track of where it left off. So it keeps going. Yeah, that's a great question. So the question was, you know, if, if find had to start over again from the beginning and search <laughs> from the beginning, the left, you know, to find the thing, first of all, it would keep returning the same result over and over again. But secondly, it, the, the uh, word matcher, the M word matcher, keeps track of where it is in the sequence in the string, and it'll start where it left off. So it basically has some state. That, that's a really good question. All right, so here's what, here's what this is occurring. When we call map search for word, as you just saw, this is going to basically break the input up into a bunch of results. And those results are all going to get appended onto a search results object so that we transform the word we're looking for to the results where that word appeared in the input string. So that's what's going on under the hood. OK, any questions about, about that? So that's how a sequential splitterator works.